All right then, gang. So in this series, you're going to learn how to create a cool retro game that I grew up on in arcades when I was younger called Asteroids. And it's basically a 2D shooter game where you control a spaceship and fire missiles at asteroids to destroy them. So that's what you're going to be building in this series using the HTML canvas element and some JavaScript. Now, to teach you how to make this, I'm going to hand you over to Chris from Chris Courses, who is an awesome creator here on YouTube with a load of other similar tutorials about how to make 2D games in the browser. So definitely check him out if that's your thing. I'm going to leave the link to his channel down below the video. But now let me hand you over to Chris so he can guide you through making this Asteroids game from scratch. To create an Asteroids game, we're going to need to do a little bit of project setup to start. This means creating the files that we need, the folders that we need, anything that might be required to get our game up and running. We're going to do it in this episode. So how would we get started? Well, what I like doing is I go over to my desktop and then I open up my text editor of choice, which in this case is going to be no other than Sublime Text. So just click whatever text editor you want. You should have an open window like this. And you want to save this by either going to your file at the top, hitting file, and then save. And then you need some sort of location to save this file in which we're creating. So I always go over to a web directory. This is typically where I store all my web projects, including games. And I'm going to create a new folder. And this folder is going to be called no other than Asteroids because we're making an Asteroids game. Makes sense. So next, what are we going to save this as? Well, I want to save this file as index.html. Index.html is going to house all the HTML required to get our game up and running. We're going to create a canvas element on here, and then we're going to link some JavaScript to this canvas element to begin creating that game functionality. But this is a great start. All we want to see is index.html opened up within a text editor of our choice, and here it is, sublime text. So how do we start our game? How do we set it all up? Well, like I kind of mentioned before, we need a canvas element. And to create a canvas element, it's going to look like this. Just an opening and a closing canvas tag. And this canvas element is what we're going to be drawing on to create this game. It's going to house all of our game renderings. All we need to do here is hit Command S to save this, or you can go to File, Save, doesn't really matter. But once you get the canvas in there, you can begin opening up this file within a web browser to begin viewing your game. So how would we open this up? Well, you need to find it over within your Finder or Explorer, whether or not you use Mac or Windows. So since I'm using Mac, I know I just stored this within a web directory. I'll go inside of there. We created this Asteroids folder, and here is the file in which we just saved. All we need to do is double click this to open it on up. I'm going to open it on up in a different browser, not Chrome, so you'll see that shortly. And this is opened up within the browser min. So this is what our game looks like at the moment, just a white screen, not very interesting. But if we right click and hit inspect element, and I go ahead and expand this a little bit, I want to click inside of these body tags. You're going to see we have a canvas element inside of here. And when hovering over this canvas element, we see the canvas element, basically the outlines of the canvas element, within the browser. So we know that our file is being read correctly because we see this canvas element right here. This HTML head and body tag, these are all added by the browser automatically. The browser is smart enough to know that if these don't exist, then they're going to add them automatically. And that's really nice because it cleans up our code for our game, which is really simple. All we need is a canvas element within our HTML. So that is step one. We want this canvas element to begin creating our renderings, but what is going to be step two? Well, we need to start adding in JavaScript. We can add in JavaScript in one of two ways. The first way would be creating a script tag right beneath this and then adding in all your JavaScript, whatever it might be, right here. Could be a bunch of nonsense, but I'm trying to make a game so it's not gonna be that. What I like doing instead is I like creating a separate file for this. I'm pretty sure that's the standard way to do things anyways because it helps organize and separate what our HTML is and what our JavaScript is. It's always nice to have a little bit of separation of concerns, especially when it comes to HTML and JavaScript. So that's what we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving our JavaScript over to a different file. So our file contains everything related to actual code of our game. So I'm going to get rid of the script tag that I just created. And I'm going to full screen this to make it a little easier to look at. And I'm going to hit Command N. 
This is going to create a completely new file. You'll see up here, this says untitled because we have not saved this yet. But I want to save this as index.js. And to save this, I'll go to file, save. You can also hit command S, control S if you're on Windows. And within our asteroids directory, I'm going to create a file called index.js. Now we have the location in which we want to start writing our JavaScript code. But we're not done just yet. We need to do a few more things. The first thing I would do is open up both files within the same text editor window. So if we ever need to go between the two or create new files, we have one standard location in which we can access everything. So how would I go about doing that? Well, the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is to exit out of both windows that we have opened. And I'm going to grab our folder right here, Asteroids. And on Mac, you can grab this folder and then drag it on your text editor of choice. In my case, it's going to be Sublime Text. So I'll try that again. There we go. And now you can see the project is opened up. If you're a Windows user and you can't drag things on top of your program, you're going to want to go to File, Open, and then select your project folder. Not the files, but definitely the folder name. So you'll see I'm inside of the Asteroids folder. You would hit Open, and you should be in the same location in which I'm at right now for Windows. So this is looking great. First thing I want to do now that we have both of these accessible to us is I want to pull in index.js into index.html because right now these two are separated. These will not work together unless we pull them in. And to pull in index.js, we want to create a script tag. But it's going to reference a source which indicates where is this file located relative to our project. Well, it's located right next to index.html which means we can stay inside of our root folder and indicate that with dot slash. So this just means we're within the root folder. And then we want to reference what file will index.js from the root folder. And now when we go and load our game again in the browser, we should see whatever code is within index.js being run whenever we run index.html. So let's write some console log code inside of here just to test that things are working. I'm going to console log out the code Hello, I am being read. Fascinating. And now when I go back to our browser over here, and I want to show you the process in case you're totally new to this, I'm going to hit inspect element, go over to console, refresh, and you'll see that our text is being read out. If I did not have the script tag over here, I commented this out, refresh, you're going to see it's not being read. So you want to make sure that you're definitely including the script tag and you're referencing the correct file. In our case, it's going to be index.js. So really looking great right here, but we're not done just yet. I want our game to basically take up the full width and height of the browser. Going back to inspect, which I can also access by clicking this little pointer over here and hovering over our file. I'm going to click on the body element and try to expand things again. Everything looks so big, by the way, because I need to make sure that people can see the code that I'm teaching. But nevertheless, you'll see right here, this canvas tag. It only takes up about 300 pixels of width and then 150 pixels of height. I want this to basically take up the full width and height of the screen. And to do that, we can use a little bit of JavaScript. So the first thing we're going to do is pull this canvas element right here into our JavaScript code. And then we're going to alter its width and height based on the browser windows full width and height. So how do we begin pulling in that canvas element? Well, it is actually quite simple. We're going to create a constant variable, mainly just a const. And this is going to be called canvas because this is the element in which we're going to grab. It's going to be equal to document.query selector. So document.query selector basically goes into our document. So everything you see right here within this elements tab, HTML, head, body, canvas, we can grab any of these elements available to us as long as we reference document and then dot query selector. We're querying for whatever selector it is we want to grab. The selector we want is going to be canvas because we want the canvas element. So it takes one argument and it basically says, what is the element we want to grab? What is the tag? It's going to be the canvas tag. I think that is the most in-depth description of query selector I've ever given. But if we've done this correctly, we can console log out canvas, head back on over to the browser, hit console refresh, and there is our canvas element but within JavaScript land. Anything within the console is within JavaScript land. That's what I like calling it. Hovering over this, we see the same highlight effect. We know that we did this correctly. Off to a great start. 
but we want to make this the full width and height of the browser. And we can do that by grabbing our newly created canvas const and then referencing canvas.width. What is the width of our canvas going to be equal to? Well, our windows.inner width. This window object is given to us by default by the browser. And when we reference inner width, what it's doing is it's just grabbing the full width of the browser window. So whatever this width is, might be something like 1200 for me right now. That is what we're getting right there when we reference window.inner width. And we're storing it inside of canvas.width, which is going to expand the canvas width to be that full width. We want to do the same thing for height though, because remember, we want to take out the full width and full height. Can you guess how to do this? Well, we're going to select our canvas height and then change this to the windows inner height. Really easy right there. Now, if we refresh, we're not going to see too much happening, but I can use our fancy inspector right here. Hover over the browser and you can see the canvas now highlights the full width and height of the screen. The canvas width for me is 1312 and the height is 350. It might be different for you, that is totally okay. We just want to make sure that we can play the full width and height of our browser regardless of what a user might be using for their monitor choice. So really off to a great start. I can't keep on saying it. Well, I can, but we are on to a great start. So what would I do next? Well, I want to basically start drawing on this canvas using the canvas context. So if you're completely new to HTML canvas, you might be. The canvas context is basically one very large object that contains all the functions that we might need to begin drawing on a canvas. It allows us to do things like draw rectangles, circles, triangles, whatever it might be. This canvas context is just one really big object which allows us to manipulate whatever you might see on the canvas. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to pull in this canvas context, which remember is just basically one really big magic object. And then we're going to use that to begin drawing on the screen. So how do we begin pulling in that canvas context? Well, right beneath canvas, I'm going to create a new const called C. Now, I get this all the time with people who watch my videos. They're like, naming this C is bad. I disagree in this case, and this is the only time I'll disagree. I'm using a one letter variable here, which some people might have a gripe with. And most of the time, their gripes are valid. But in this case, I'm going to be using the C const so much, and as a Canvas developer, I always know when I reference C, it means context. Only time I'm going to use a one letter variable. And if I know this means context, and I'm going to use it, be consistent throughout my whole file, it is okay to name this a one letter variable such as C. If you're really worried about it and you want to type out the full thing over and over, you can name this context, or you can do CTX. Even CTX is too long for me, so I'm not doing it. So that's besides the point, but you get the idea of why I'm calling the C. We want to get that context. So I want to reference our canvas element and call on top of this get context with an uppercase C. And there are basically two arguments from my knowledge in which mainly go in here. It's going to be 2D, which just means we want a 2D context, a 2D magic object to draw everything on the screen. Or we want a WebGL context, which is a 3D drawing manipulator. Well, I guess you could draw 2D stuff with WebGL, uh, but mainly it's used for 3D renderings. In our case, this is a 2D game, so we just want to put 2D in here. Now we always want to make sure that we're pulling these in correctly. The best way to do that is to const log out whatever variable we're creating. In this case, it is C, so I can save that with a const log, go over to our game, try to open up our inspector, and then go over to our console and refresh. And you can see we have this canvas rendering context 2D object. That's absolutely perfect. Exactly what we want. So as long as your console right here looks like mine, then we can continue onwards with drawing stuff. So this context const is going to allow us to do things like create rectangles. And to create a rectangle, we can call c.fillRect. And this takes four arguments right here. The first two are going to be the position of the rectangle, and the last two are going to be the width and the height of the rectangle. So the first argument is going to be X position of the rectangle. Let's say we want it about 100 pixels from the top left corner of our window. How do we do that? Well, we type in the text 100. For our Y value, which is the second argument, as indicated by the comma right here, we're going to add in another 100 because I want it 100 pixels from the top of the browser. 
and then we want a width and a height. Let's just go ahead and keep using the 100, be consistent for the width, and then I want 100 for the height as well. So we're just drawing a basic cube right here, or a basic square, excuse me. Now, I want this to be a particular color. If you just save this as is and refresh, let's, let me just show you. I'll save and refresh. You can see we have a black square on the screen. You might have a white background, by the way. My browser's background by default is gray. Just want to make sure that you know what's going on here. But we do have this black square. If I want to change the color to this, I can use c.fillstyle and set that equal to something like red, just a basic color string. Refresh, and now we have a red square. Awesome stuff, but does Asteroids really even contain a red square or a black square? Not really. So what I want to do is make sure that this square right here takes up the full width and height of our canvas, and I'm going to make it black. That is going to be the background for our game because we want to be in outer space. Outer space is black, no other color. You can make it whatever color, it doesn't matter to me, but I want to go and base this off the original Asteroids game. So my fill style is definitely going to be black, and I want fill rect to take up the full width and height of the screen, and I want it to start at the very top left-hand corner, so up here rather than down here. If that's the case, I just need to make sure that my x value right here is zero, my y value is zero, and then I need to change my width to be equal to canvas.width, and then my height to be equal to canvas.height. Save that, refresh, and now you can see we have this black background. Looking really good, but you can see we have a little bit of margin on the top left, and then I can scroll down. We have some margin on the bottom as well, and there might be even a little on the right. How do we get rid of this margin, and where does it even come from? Well, browsers add this margin by default. Quite annoying in my opinion. I don't think it needs to be there, but whoever made these browsers decided this margin is going on every web page by default, so you need to remove it on your own. Now, over in index.html, this is where we will be removing this, and we can use CSS to do so. This is pretty much the only CSS we'll be writing for this course, so if you're new to it or scared of it, don't be too scared. It's going to be really easy. To create some CSS, we're going to add in a style tag. It looks like this. And I want to style one particular element. What element do I want to style within our document? If I ever forget, I can always right click, hit inspect element, use our little inspect right here, click whatever it might be, and then I can even look through our hierarchy right here to grab a particular element. I want to select the body element because you see if I hover over this, we have an orange border around the top, left, right, and even the bottom of our screen, we just can't see it. But this orange border represents margin, and that is the margin that's being added on automatically by the browser. I want to get rid of this on the body tag. So how would I do that? Well, I want to grab the body tag, which I can do because I'm writing CSS within these style tags. And then I want to style a particular style, which in this case is going to be the margin of the body. If I set this equal to zero, give it a save, refresh, and then I hover over our body tag, you're going to see that orange border is no longer there. If I get rid of our console right here and refresh again, we have no white border at all. Exactly what we want. Looking great. We got rid of that margin and we're getting closer to finishing up this project setup. Is there anything else in which we might need to do? I think not. If that is the case, let's head on over to our to-do list and check off project setup. By the way, if you want to watch this entire course now without YouTube adverts, you can do. It's all up on the NetNinja website, netninja.dev. You can buy the course for $2 to get instant access to all of it, or you can sign up to NetNinja Pro and get instant access to all of my courses without adverts, as well as premium courses not found on YouTube, including my Udemy ones. That's $9 a month, and you can get your first month half price when you use this promo code right here. So I'm going to leave this link down below in the video description for you to sign up. And I really hope you enjoy this series, and please do not forget to share, subscribe, and like the videos. That really helps a lot, and I'm going to see you in the very next lesson.